I want you to turn for a moment to page 404. The bells are uh, ringing. In my watch, it's two minutes to six. Is that right? So they're a little ahead. So for the past uh, now 24 hours, we gathered last night at six o'clock for Kol Nidre. And uh, we were feeling a little fuller than we're feeling now. I think we were feeling a little stronger than we're feeling now. But I think now we have peeled the layers, layers and layers and layers in our heart and in our neshama. And we are reaching the core of Yom Kippur. This is what this whole day of Yom Kippur has been about. It's about getting into deeper and deeper and deeper places. And I hope many of us have achieved at least some of that depth and have already attained some of that essence of what this day is about. In the Amidah of Neila, the Amidah of Neila is similar to all of the other Amidot that we've said throughout this day, but there is a significant change. There is an addition on page 404 with a series of questions that do not appear in the other Amidot and that I believe go to the very core, the very core of the spiritual work we're doing here to ask ourselves these questions. Questions about who we are and what our life is about. It doesn't get more essential and deeper than that to ask those questions. They are in the middle of page 404. Ma'anu, what are we? Ma'chayenu, what is our life? Ma'chazdenu, what is our goodness? Ma'chitkenu, what is our righteousness? Ma'ishenu, here it says, what's our achievement? Ma'kochenu, what is our power? Ma'gvuratenu, what are our victories? What is our heroism? All these questions are questions that are intended to be read here in the Amidah as rhetorical questions. The answer is we're nothing. That's what the text the liturgists wanted to answer. Our life doesn't amount to much when we have discovered how frail, how vulnerable, how weak, how prone to sin, how prone to mess up. There's not much that we have to show for ourselves. And so the liturgists wanted to answer all these questions with nothing. What are we nothing? It is recited in humility as an acknowledgement of our small, smallness and insignificance before the grandeur of God, because the section that comes next is but you, O oh God, we are nothing, but you, O oh God, are, are great. You're grand and your universe is awesome. We have transgressed, we have sinned, we've messed up. We don't have anything to show for ourselves. And therefore, God, we appeal to your mercy and to your forgiveness. That's what this section is doing here. I would like to suggest that we read these questions as real, as real questions, not as rhetorical questions, with the answer, we are nothing. I'd like to suggest that we ask these questions now and that these questions be carried by us after Neila as we resume our lives, as we go back to eat and we go back to work and to study and to our ordinary lives. 
that we carry these questions with us and that we carry perhaps the inspiration of some of the texts that I'm going to share with you that will bring some light and maybe even some depth into these questions. First, Ma'an, what are we? So Heschel says, there are two ways in which the Bible speaks of the creation of the human being. In the first chapter of the book of Genesis, which is devoted to the creation of the physical universe, the human being is described as having been created in the image and likeness of God. In the second chapter, which tells of the commandment not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, the human being is described as having been formed out of the dust of the earth. Together, image and dust express the polarity of our nature. We are duality, a duality of mysterious grandeur and pompous aridity, a vision of God and a mountain of dust. It is because of our being dust that our iniquities may be forgiven. It is because of our being an image that our righteousness is expected, said Heschel. So yes, we are ma'anu, we are in a permanent state of battle within ourselves, pulled in opposite directions by the dust and by the image. It is the inescapable reality of our human nature. Ma'anu, who are we? Will we remember the image or will, we, or will we succumb to the dust? Will we honor the image by living with courage, with honor, with dignity, with integrity, with truth? The next question, what is our life? What are we doing with this life? that has been given to us. It is alone. And at some point, we will have to return it. No one knows how long they will live. So how do we use our life before we have to return it? What do we invest it in? What is it worth living for? In the Talmud, there is a section in the tractate Brachot, where a number of rabbis share what is the prayer that they recite after the Amidah? What's the end prayer, spontaneous prayer, which will they recite after the Amidah? And Rav, the Talmudic scholar Rav, offered this prayer. And it's all about what type of life he aspires to live. May it be your will, Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors, to grant us a long life a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life with proper sustenance, a life with physical vitality, a life conscious of heaven's demands and weary of sin, a life free, free of shame and reproach, a life of abundance and honor, a life of love of Torah, conscious of heaven's demands, a life in, the, in which the worthy desires of our hearts are fulfilled. Of course, this prayer made it into Birkat HaChodesh. They took it from the Talmud and the liturgy is put in the Siddur in the prayer that we recite as we announce the new month. But see all the things that he aspires to. He aspires, yes, to peace, to goodness, to blessing, to proper sustenance, proper sustenance. Not more, not less, proper sustenance, physical vitality, love of Torah, honor, a life free of shame and reproach, all these things, that's what it's worth living for. And then Machas Denu, it says here, translated, what is our goodness, but Chesed is love and kindness and devotion. So we know the Sami said that the world is built on Chesed, the world is built on love. Ki amarti olam chesed ibane. And according to Maimonides, the entire universe came into being by virtue of God's chesed, of God's love. Everything that is and all of us are a result or a consequence of God's love, of divine chesed. And Rabbi Simlai teaches in the Talmud 
that the Torah begins with an act of chesed. God makes clothes for Adam and Eve. And the Torah ends with an act of chesed, of kindness, of loving kindness, because God buries Moshe. So chesed is at the core of Torah. But God didn't put chesed at the core of Torah in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, and made Torah the pursuit of love and kindness. Just that we might say, how great is God and God's chesed. God put it there because God wanted us to imitate God, to walk in God's ways. What does it mean to walk in God's ways? It means to be and to do the things that God does in terms of chesed, of loving kindness, and to be gracious and to be generous and to love people, to love humanity. So machas denu, what is our chesed? as we walk out and we resume our ordinary lives. Will we walk in God's ways of loving kindness throughout the year? Matzit is the next one. What is our righteousness? What is our tzedakah? Tzedakah is as important as all the other commandments put together, said Rav Asi. All the commandments together on the one side and on the other side, tzedakah, righteousness and Justice. Tzedek and tzedakah concern our, respond, our response to the needs of other human beings. A person's orientation to respond to that which is other than oneself, to be moved by the world beyond one's private concerns. Tzedek, tzedakah, by the way, are not limited just to concrete action or material giving. It extends to listening, to becoming aware and sharing in the suffering and the pain of another person, in their humiliation, in their isolation, in their despair. There are plenty of people who live in despair, who live in pain, who live in suffering, who live in deprivation. So the question is, do we listen? Are we going to listen? Are we going to come out of our own shell in the year ahead of us? Matzit Kenu, what is our righteousness? What is our tzedakah? Will we hear? Will we see? And most important, will we respond? Here it's translated as, what is our achievement? Ishenu is salvation, our salvation, our deliverance, but it also means our hope and our aspiration. What do we aspire to? So Rav Kook says, everything, everything in the world is full of richness and greatness. Everything aspires to ascend, to be purified and to be elevated. Everything recites a song. Everything offers praise, magnifies, exalts. Everything builds, serves, perfects, elevates, aspires to unite and to be integrated. That's why he perceived, you know, with his spiritual eyes, he perceived that everything in creation wants to unify, wants to become part of the one wants to ascend, wants to elevate, wants to sanctify, wants to sing, wants to praise. My Shainu. What is our aspiration? What do we dream of? What do we want for ourselves, for our families, for our loved ones, for our community, for our country, for Israel, for the world? What do we want? What do we aspire? And I'm afraid that we, our aspirations are always too low. Our dreams are always too small. If we don't dream big and pursue and step up, nothing's going to change. So we need to go for something big, for something that is unachievable, so that we can stretch and even more stretch more and stretch even more than we're capable of in order to be able to fulfill some of these things in our world. Makochenu. What is our power? How will we use our power? Will we be active or will we, will we succumb to passivity? Will we create? Will we act? Will we rise? Rabbi Soloveitchik said that the imitation of God is not limited to performing acts of chesed. The imitation of God extends to the essential attribute of becoming a subject in picking, keeping with this imperative, he says, a person must therefore strive to become a subject and not an object. 
one who influences one's surroundings rather than one who is influenced. One who creates, not one who cre is created. One who acts and not one who acts is acted upon. One who controls one's environment rather than to be controlled by it. A person, a subject, is blessed, he said, with free will. What are we going to use our free will and our power for? Will we be active? Will we be creative? Will we build? Or will we slip into passivity and inaction and a sense of powerlessness? Finally, Magevurateinu. What is our might? Here it says, what are our victories? What is our might? Gevura means also heroism. And the uh, Mishnah, Pirkei Avot, asks, who is mighty? Mighty is a person who overcomes their baser inclinations. As it is said, one slow to anger is better than a hero. And one who rules over one's own spirit and one's own impulses is better off than one who conquers a city. Might is the ability to overcome the instinctive drives that are part of our nature, to hold ourselves back. Magevurateinu, what is our might and our heroism? Will we cultivate our inner strength of character? Will we develop the capacity to do battle with the destructive forces within ourselves, with our basest instincts, with our addictions and temptations? Will we be capable of resisting our thirst for more material possessions, for power, for honor, or the constant gratification of our narcissistic needs at the expense of everything else? So these are real questions. Ma'anu, ma'chayenu, ma'chazdenu, ma'tzitkenu, ma'ishenu, ma'kochenu, ma'kvuratenu. Maimonides said that uh, humanity is like a group of people in the darkest night. From time to time, there is a flash of lightning and all of a sudden people can see everything with total clarity and they recover their sense of direction. But the light is a flash. It lasts for a, just a quick moment and then it disappears. I hope this day of Yom Kippur has been that kind of light. That kind of light that allowed us to see ourselves in clarity or greater clarity, to understand something about ourselves a little more than we did before, and that we get a little bit of a greater sense of direction for our lives. What is the work that is ahead of us? Transformation doesn't happen in one day, but perhaps we had some insight, perhaps we had some desire that was awakened to change something, to make a turn. It's the beginning of change, but now the work begins, the difficult daily spiritual work to become who we want to become, who we desire to become, who God expects us to become. I hope this Yom Kippur has shown a bright light of teshuvah, of forgiveness and of life, of love. Like that flash of light, Yom Kippur lasts only for a moment, and it's gone. Yesterday, six o'clock, it's gone. It's gone, the day is gone. We have one hour, less than one hour now for Neila. But the memory of the light and the memory of what we saw and experienced here is not gone. It's marked in the heart in the mind, in the neshama. The light of Yom Kippur will be gone. The day is waning. Look behind and you'll see it's getting dark. Or look through the side. It's going to get dark in just a few minutes. The light will be gone. 
Yom Kippur will be gone, but the memory of this Yom Kippur hopefully will last for days and weeks and months. And may it continue to inspire us to ascend to better lives. May we carry the memory with us as the gates of Neila close.